Hey, what's up guys? Steve Camrat here from ADV Pulse. We just wrapped up the second day of testing the new Triumph Tiger 1200, uh, this being the Rally Pro, and our second day of testing being the off-road day. Uh, we've ridden both the GT and the Rally, and in both trims. So there's two trim levels for this these bikes. It's a Pro, and then the Explorer Editions. The Explorer Editions have a large gas tank. They hold 30 liters. The GT models, um, they come with an 18-19 cast wheel setup. They're more for the road. It's a completely different bike, um, and it's not really what I would consider to be a choice for someone like me that just uh, wants to go off-road, wants to go fast, wants to push a bike hard. Um, that's a bike for someone who wants to do sport touring, two-up touring, uh, maybe do a little bit of gravel road. It's set up for that, whereas the, the Rally Pro and the Rally Explorer both have that 21-inch front wheel and 18-inch rear wheel. Uh, that's running the units that are uh, cross-spoked and tubeless. We'll get into that a little bit deeper, especially in the article, which we're going to link below. So if there's any details or specs that you're really looking for, you know, check the description below. We're, we're going to keep this a little bit lighter and talk really what uh, is hard to convey in words is what does it really feel like to ride and how is it uh, compared to some of the other bikes on the market without being too wordy. How do we get into this bike? It's all new and there's nothing the same about it. Not the frame, not the motor, the drive shaft, the suspension, nothing. So the big thing about this bike is the all new 1200 motor. It's a T-plane firing order, so that means it has that staggered firing order that the Tiger 900 has. Big improvement on the Tiger 900. Even bigger improvement for this bike. Um, engine characteristics are, it's got a good growl. It still has that triple whirl. Um, there's a little bit of valve noise that you hear, valve train noise, so you can hear it kind of uh, working its magic. That's nothing to worry about. That's a normal thing. Every bike here did it. Every bike here performed flawlessly. So. Um, that's just part of the character of this, this motorcycle. Once you get moving, that's where everything comes out. You know, it, it has a tremendous intake growl and it really puts down some good power, just like that Tiger 900 does. The, the staggered firing order, it's 180 degrees and then two 270 degrees firing order, uh, positions on the crank pin. A little hard to explain, but all you need to really know is that it has a all new counterbalancer shaft to counteract any, uh, vibrations that might come from that unnatural firing order because the old one was 120 degrees apart equally spaced across all three cylinders makes great horsepower makes a great sound doesn't make a lot of torque and doesn't have any character other than that triple whirl this bike has so much more character and it's so much more um sharp in sport mode and and in the aggressive maps it's it's very fast it, it wants to rev very quickly it's much harder to stall now it's much more tractable uh, it actually does power slides like almost telepathically. You just kind of think about breaking the rear end loose and start opening up that throttle and the rear end steps out really nicely and it's predictable. Um, and it's also just a missile of an engine. Uh, we never really touch red line off road, never really touched the, touch the red line on road. I had to really like hold it there and leave it there. You, you're kind of uh, spend a lot of time in second, third gear off road and the motor just puts down all this really great power. You can kind of come into stuff a gear too high, like a tighter turn, and just leave it there, maybe a little clutch and, and get back on the revs. And it, it really helps this bike make it easier to ride off-road. The original Triumph Tiger 1200 was not the most off-road friendly. Triumph's done a complete ground up redesign on this, and it, it really shows that they put a ton of focus into the off-road worthiness. So the chassis is all new. Um, it's comprised of aluminum, it's got a detachable subframe, uh, steel for the main frame, and then it has some magnesium parts that also help with the engine cradle. Uh, it's, it's really impressive what the frame does because it has to hold up this big bike. Now what else they've done is they've cut 55 pounds of weight out of the, free, out of the whole bike itself. Um, Triumph's done that by doing things like a double-sided swing arm. So it's got a pretty unique looking swing arm. They've carved quite a bit of weight out of just that alone. And the whole drive shaft assembly has been all redesigned. The, the care and time that went into making this motorcycle perform really well uh, has, has really comes through on this bike. Biggest takeaway is actually going to be front end stability um, off-road. We put in probably close to 60 or 80 miles today off-road. Um, and the front end's super predictable. It's not like the outgoing Tiger 1200. It's not like the older uh, Tiger 800s, which could kind of like push a little bit and, and not be so predictable. The front end's really predictable. You can feel the traction when it's there. It puts a ton of confidence in, um, 
in yourself and in your riding. And I found myself pushing this bike harder than I ever imagined, um, just based on the fact that it's it's a larger bike. I kind of came at it with uh, that it what might not be as sharp or as razor edged as the Tiger 900, and that's actually just not the case. It's it's quite hard to explain. Um, but this is a better bike than the Tiger 900 if you're gonna keep your Tiger 900 stock uh, as far as off-road. On-road, of course, this thing is just a land missile. It's super fast. It's got a ton of motor. You never really feel like you're, I actually never hit the top speed on this bike. Uh, so I don't know what it is. Triumph has gone in and put a lot of work into this bike to, and they're not shy about who the competition is. You know, other people know who the competition is as well. If you kind of do the math and think about who else has a shaft drive adventure motorcycle in the 1200 CC category, uh, they went right after that. So they, they cut a bunch of weight and then they wanted to make it more user friendly. It's got nice big handlebars on it now. It's really, they're really wide. And uh, the bar riser bar position seems to be perfect. The foot pegs uh, are a little far forward for my taste if you were really gonna be looking to, to go fast, but in an adventure position where you're standing up and you're on the pegs and you're waiting them, the, uh, the whole rider ergonomics are pretty good. At, for me, I'm at six foot two. I think they'll work for anybody from probably the ranges of five foot eight to six foot four. So it's a big range there. Um, factory uh, seat positions, you could have it in the high or low position. We ran them in the low position and it does make the bike feel uh, much more easy to manage off-road, especially getting a foot down and trying to get some pivot or tight turns done. You can, uh, you can actually get your foot out a little bit more in front of the motor. You can't do that on some of the competition because the motor's in the way. Uh, Triumph's done a real good job of squeezing this bike down at the waistline as well and, and making it really narrow. There's almost uh, no interference from the motor, the transmission, the clutch pack, uh, or the bevel drive or the shaft drive there. There's nothing really that your foot hits against. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. So a lot of things feel really well thought out and planned. And it just shows that Triumph really they really tried with this bike and, and it really comes through when you start riding it off-road. On-road, it's tremendous. It's, it's really good. I'd say it's the second best on-road adventure bike that I've ever ridden. You know, second to the Ducati Multistrada V4S, uh, which is, that bike's no slouch and it's, it's much more on-road focused. Off-road focused for in the 1200cc or, you know, large displacement uh, adventure bike segment. Off-road, I think that this bike performs better than most of the competition. And in a stock form, because of this new suspension that it has, it has show a semi-active suspension in it, um, and it's tunable with the LCD display. It performs really well. The front end always has the right rebound speed to get that front tire back on the contact patch. Um, and it really kind of soaks up some big bumps, some big G outs. The rear shock is a little undersprung for my weight, uh, understandably, you know, I'm right around 210, 220. And so uh, that would be the only fallback for this bike is if you're pushing it really hard and hitting big G outs, you would notice that. Now, what does that mean for the competition or going against other bikes? Uh, look, it's just this, the, in the stock form, if you want a bike that's gonna perform really well and you don't wanna run out and try to figure out how to buy a $2,000 rear shock or try to figure out what suspension shop to send your brand new bike to, you know, this bike is pretty close to perfect from the factory um, as far as suspension goes. And that's going to make a big difference for people who don't want to get too much into their bike. And they, I don't want people to, to kind of pick up a bike and be like, oh, cool, I could get this bike, but then I need tires and suspension. And, uh, you know, I need a new seat and new handlebars and new uh, agronomics. So I want bar risers. Don't do any of that with this bike. Uh, if you pick up one of these, you're going to take it and you're just going to put a bunch of gas in it instead of running out and spending your money on suspension. Um, this bike's going to perform really well for the people that want to do adventure rides. And as an adventure bike, it's extremely well poised. It works really well. I'm just blown away by what we put this bike through here today and how well it handled everything, especially, you know, the bigger G outs, the higher speed stuff, the uh, suspension, even though it says semi-active, it's pretty much fully active. And, um, you know, it's speed sensitive as well. So once you start going a little bit faster, you can feel the bike stiffen up a little bit. If you're going in and you're uh, going downhill and you're having some big kind of jarring issues, you know, the bike actually will, you can feel it firm itself up and kind of uh, react to the scenario that it's being put through. You know, that's a, that's a big thing for this bike because what happens is 
you know, people take an adventure bike off road and then all of a sudden they push it too hard and it becomes an issue. This bike, you're not gonna push it too hard and have it become an issue. In fact, I pushed it as hard as I could and it just sucked everything up. User interface on the uh, LCD display is pretty good. Um, instead of always returning back to road mode, if you key the bike all the way off and it's got a key fob, keyless, so if you push the button and you turn the bike all the way off, you turn it back on, it will return to the last mode it was in if you just push the mode button and the check button before you take off. So while it doesn't always stay in the mode, it's very close to that, which a lot of people are gonna appreciate. It's always been an issue with uh, Triumph and BMW. KTM made these dongles that you could get around the whole IMU system. Instead, Triumph just kind of figured out a way to make it so that way you can get it back to off-road pro mode or off-road mode. This bike has both off-road, off-road pro mode. Um, with the other rider modes, you have your normal road rider mode, which is completely programmable. And then you have a rain mode and a sport mode. Everything's tunable, traction control, ABS. Uh, you can turn both on and off or just to off-road mode. Uh, we ran them in off-road mode, which means you can lock up the rear. The front still has ABS, which is huge for this bike because locking up that front end and washing it out on the trail is just something you don't want to get into. Uh, another nice feature about things that you can let the electronics do is the automatic shifter up and down auto blipper. Uh, you can come into a turn a little too hot. This has been a big thing that I always enjoy about these bikes is that you can just downshift, downshift without worrying about the clutch or rev matching. You just get your braking done, get your downshifts done, get the turn done, and then take off again without stalling the bike, having a tip over, or you know going off trail because you're worried about the bike being on or off or stalled. It's, it makes adventure riding easier. One major complaint for this bike is that the, the menu system is a little bit chunky. Um, there's a couple ways to get to some things. We've spent two days with the bike now. No, I didn't read a user manual. I didn't watch it, like a video about it. And uh, I've got it dialed now. So if you own this bike, you don't go to the dealership, start trying to get through the menu and be like, oh, this is tough. Just take the bike home and you'll figure it out there uh, once you own it. Another great feature this bike has that comes over from the Tiger 900 is the new split rads. So the split radiator system allows heat to go come into these scoops in the front of the bike and then it's ejected out these side ports. The rider feels absolutely no heat at all whatsoever. There's no heat from the exhaust either or the engine. Uh, this is one of the coolest running motorcycles I've ever sat on or been on. Absolutely no one complained about the heat uh, here in Portugal. Uh, we really lucked out with the weather here. The riding was fantastic. You know, no super tight trails, but that's not what this bike was built for. It's built for adventure bike riding and it, it's going to allow you to get out there with your friends and do your ride. I, I really like it for that. The only other small complaint about this bike that I have is the uh, fueling on it is a little snatchy. A lot of other riders kind of noticed it. It's, it's the on-off throttle response um, can be a bit jarring. Hopefully Triumph can figure that out with a software update to just get it to be a little bit smoother from off throttle to back on. Uh, engine braking on it works really good and the, uh, the brakes on it are phenomenal. It has the Brembo style Emmas up front and um, they come with 320 mil discs. So that's the same as the Tiger 900s. And it, it's just a really good braking system, big monoblock uh, Brembos. So I don't have any complaints with that. And it's radial mounted. It also has a hydraulic clutch for the first time for a uh, adventure bike from Triumph. Even all the switch gears premium, they didn't skimp on this bike. There's no parts that look unfinished um, and everything's got like a nice feel to it. So to wrap it up, you know, competition wise, you've got the BMW R1250 GS. Um, I would choose the Tiger 1200 over that for adventure bike riding, going fast. And uh, it's just more my style and speed. It's got that 2118 cross spoke wheel set on it, which is really important. A lot of people run out and they put a 21 inch front on their BMW. And uh, it, pr it provides a lot of off-road use and stability. And, and it's just a really nice feature to have the motor is just got a little bit more power to it. It's it feels like a smaller bike. It's lighter, and, and that's like one of the big faults with the BMW is that the motor's big. It's at the bottom. The bike feels huge. This bike doesn't feel that big. It feels really close to the 900. There's not a big size difference. There's a few here, and comparatively, if uh, if you want this big 1200 cc motor, you're not giving up when it comes to the size of the bike, you're not giving up a whole bunch against weight either. 
the KTM 1290 ton of motor on the bike but it's a big v-twin i like something with more than two cylinders it's just a personal feel of mine they feel smoother they they're happier to rev um, and they don't feel as serious the ducati multistrada v4s 100 percent the ducati multistrada v4s is the king of the road uh fantastic on-road manners great street bike that bike does not have close to the off-road performance stability user friendliness that the tiger 1200 has especially because of its wheel setup and you know its weight distribution the tiger is also a pretty long bike so when you're sliding it into a turn it feels very stable it doesn't kind of surprise you or bite you big advantage there is going to be the off-road worthiness on road yeah you're going to give up a little bit uh but for me that's that's not even an issue and this thing still has a ton of motor like it's not like you're really giving up that much uh, you might just get a few less speeding tickets, but I doubt it because this thing is just super fast. And you don't find, like I, we didn't find ourselves in the red line a lot or even that high in the RPMs. So you're able to stay a little bit more calm on this bike, whether you're on-road or off-road. The Ducati's not that kind of bike. The Honda Africa Twin 1100, great bike, great motor, but it is underpowered compared to this bike and it's under spec it's it's almost like it's not the same wheelhouse the honda africa twins are more like a 800 cc bike with a like a really detuned thousand cc motor or 1100 cc motor and this motor in this bike is not a detuned motor it's not pulling any punches so to put them in the same category i really can't do it unless you were just looking for a honda then that's where you would go and so the last bikes that we'd have to choose this bike against would be the tiger 900 or the triumph scrambler 1200 because all of these are going to be in triumph showrooms together uh, if it was me and i was not modifying my triumph tiger 900 um, this is the best stock form adventure bike for someone like me and it would be personally my choice uh, the scrambler 1200 my personal one is an absolute beast it's a race bike but that bike's taken a lot of work to get it to be um, as capable as, as it is and it requires its own riding style so if it was my money in the showroom, gun to my head, which one am I choosing? I think I'd go for the Tiger 1200 Rally Pro. Whew, I'm tired. Dude, you're that, on the wrong side of the caution tape. Steve Conrad? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> She's sometimes nice and sometimes. Sometimes not nice. ¿Qué te pasa, Fox? No, sure. Este es el dueño, he's the owner. Okay, Hey, baby, come on, come here. Oh, he's shy. Yeah, you're just a little camera shy. <laughs> Hey man, you gonna help these guys or what? Get 
get you guys out of here any faster yet. <laughs> Got your high vis on just like me. Look at us, we're a couple construction workers. <laughs> Did you hear what I said about all your pot? You got more pockets than a pool table? <laughs> Is that what you said? That's video? what I said, yeah. <laughs> now that outfit looks like you're on, you know, it's very stormtrooper. I, I like, like it. it, man. Dude, I, I like, it is cool, but I don't know, like. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still down for first? <laughs> I thought you were pointing at that pothole because you wanted me to hit it. Oh, no, don't hit that. <laughs> I'll pull the spine out. I went, I went right through it. Oh my god, it's horrendous. <laughs> Did you hit it as well? Oh yeah. I broke my back twice and I hit that last time we were out. Oh my god, I, I'm never forgetting that snare. Okay. <laughs> Are you gonna be a dinner? Oh, this by the way is way better. This is this is the one. Does that make you smile now? I've been smiling the whole way back. You didn't notice? I had that Coca-Cola and then just boom, happiness. Stop stopped happiness. sulking like a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which one am I in the group? Four? Four. Four. <laughs> four. I'm number four. You just sound four. simple. You four sound four like photos. Photos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stab yourself. <laughs> look, at the, Why look, at, look at that finger you got there. I don't want you touching me with that thing. We're definitely the, the talented group and also devilishly good looking. Uh, Is that what you guys say? Steely, obviously. Steely. <laughs> Steely. <laughs> Just pull the photos like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, man. <laughs> oh, man, damn. No warm up, just straight to deadlift. You wanna lift, dude? Ice key. That one, that one's on, Good man. Don't worry, Zach, we sent the Revzilla recovery team out for you. <laughs> you count it. Yep. Got it. No, you guys got it. I'm just gonna be here to hold it. To be fair, we were very mature about it. Oh yeah. No one roosted him. Woo! That was big! We lack a concentration. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was too busy watching what you were they doing. They knew that was tight. They knew yeah. it was coming as well. Nah, it's fine. <laughs> 